<laughs> Do you want me to keep that in now, I now that care. we've done it? <laughs> Hello! Good morning. <laughs> I looked a little scary, but okay. Hi! Maybe we'll put that in the blooper at okay. the end. Watch till the end, because we'll show what I, silly things I was doing before we started. Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow. The Adventures of Liz and Rebecca. Hi. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber. In kind of rainy and going to be yucky for the next few days, Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. But it's only going to be like 80 degrees. Instead of 90 something. That's true. The rain's going to keep it a little cooler. So, yeah. yay. So, okay. Um, hi, it's Thursday. So we are coming to you. I was about to say live. I mean, as live as we get, we film and then I cut the ends off when we post. And sometimes... We try not to be live. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? I, I'm always preferring dead, but you know. <laughs> we're not over edited and we're not no. scripted and we don't do show notes, so no. yay. Is that a new dress? No, it's an old dress. Okay. You have mascara under your eye. I know. You know why that is? Both because I just rubbed my eyes and because I put on mascara to film today and I blinked before it set. Well, it's all the way down here. That's weird. Yeah. I thought when I was, okay, hi. Oh, look at that, yeah. When I was, um, hello. It was going to distract me the entire <laughs> show. Well, when I was doing the little flippy thing, which I'm going to put at the end, I was like, is that on the phone or is that on me? Is it better? It is gone. Yay! <laughs> so I also realized right as we started filming that, oh, I'm a little hot, so I'm going to fluff my hair to cool me off um I didn't put lipstick on you like putting dark lipstick on. I like my dark lipstick I mean half the time we don't have any makeup on either so it's just you know I, so we were wearing it we have for more like, established features on camera we were so. wearing it for a hot minute and, and then like every day and now I only wear it on filming days maybe yeah if we remember yeah Hi. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so we established right before, um, we I forgot. Uh oh, I forgot to talk to you about something before we started filming, but hang on. I'm going to go through these, through these things in order. We established before we turned on the camera that we don't have any dear Becky and Lizzie questions for this week. What I forgot to ask you before we filmed, but we, I can ask you now. And if this gets cantankerous, we can, we can edit it out. <laughs> is um, our sit and stitch, our, our Sunday virtual sit and stitch. We have nightly sit and stitch once a week. Like we have weekly evening sit and stitch on Tuesdays. We're going to knock this out right now too. Tuesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time on Zoom. We have virtual sit and stitch. You can get in with the shop phone number. 828-877-3550. And then once a month, we try to do a Sunday afternoon virtual sit and stitch. And um, usually it's in the middle of the month, but next month, July 2024, in case you're watching this down the line, catching up. In the future. <laughs> in the future. Um, in the middle of the, like, last time we held a sit and stitch i said we're gonna do it on july 14th bastille day and jan had all kinds of doo -doo -doo. and then i realized um that i have a sock class on that day a virtual sock class it's the second of four there's still time to join that by the way because i'm giving liz a chance to think about things i haven't actually mentioned yet I, but i i have a feeling i know where you're going and i'm fine with it <laughs> I mean, okay, let me, let me stay on track here. Stay on target. Do, 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 do. Um, our, our sock series, it's four classes, starts in person this Saturday. There's still a little space left in it. Um, and then it starts virtual, the virtual session start this Sunday, which is June 30th. And the second of the four classes is on July 14th. So it's hard to do both. And I, I, I floated, not seriously, the idea of doing both in the same day, but at different times. And Liz was like, oh, heck no. <laughs> that so, would kill us. Yeah, probably. But, I mean, because doing we'd things have every... have to shift... The time. The times. So... They'd have to start at, like, three, which is right when the other thing ends. And, oh, my gosh, it'd be... Okay. So... Yeah, no. Um, 
And the virtual class, sessions two and three, are the 14th and, what does that make it, the 21st? They're back-to-back -back because it's about doing the heel in two sections. By the way, you can still, I think I said this already, but I'm going to say it again. You can still purchase that and be part of that. So, um, we have, uh, the only options for July then are July 6th. 7th. That's what I meant. I, the July 6th is in my head because I have a Saturday class that's unrelated to the sock class. Okay, July 7th, it's a Sunday. Check your calendars, people. It's the Sunday of that weekend. July 7th, we'll say it a bunch of times so my 6th is wiped out, kind of. Um, July 7th or July 20-something at the very end. 28th, I think it is. I'm yes. mathing in my head. Um, so we have to pick one. And I didn't check with you before we filmed. And... My e gut. Either way, I think it conflicts with Formula One schedule. So oh I just no, don't care. <laughs> well you'll just have to you'll just have to like mute yourself and watch Formula One, but at least smile at the camera. Um, my gut was pushing towards the sixth, seventh, seventh. Oh gosh, I can't do dates. Seventh, the early one. I, I'm fine with the seventh. Okay, so okay, so that's basically like in a week and a half. All right, thank you. You're welcome. We will start publicizing that as, as often and as well as we can. We only have one more of these before that happens. But July 7th, I'm saying it louder so it'll stick in my head. July 7th will be our Sunday virtual sit and stitch. Um, from We do that one now from 2 to 4. 2 to 4. On Sunday, U.S. Eastern Time. And you get into Zoom if you want to do Zoom with the shop phone number. 828-877-3550. And you get, you can also tap into Facebook Live and see my smiling face and hear what's going on on Zoom. There's lots of different reasons people prefer Facebook to Zoom, and but we give you both those options only on the Sunday ones. I think that's all the technical things I had to go over. Okay. I think. So, what is this, Liz? Well, this is only half the pile. It's all of this. That's, so That's amazing. Last week I was spinning... I think the last couple of weeks, we were talking about yeah. you spinning and, and prepping new and, hair. Yes. So. I feel like this is like Rapunzel. <laughs> sort of. Kind of. Um, so I spun six or seven balls of wizard. Um, and this is what's left over after I put what I wanted in my hair. Um, so I have enough for like two more sets. Here. So, I will show my hair. Yes, show off your hair, please. Show my hair. So, oh, I should be. this is my hair. Yeah. Can you see it? Um, I can see it because I'm okay. right here. I know you're I'm, right okay, here. Okay, you want me like, to check the camera? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. Let me, okay. let me. Yeah, the little tangle over here. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. oh well, that's so pretty. Wizard likes to Velcro itself to each other. So, yes. um, I did throw in some wet felted dreads. From a different set and the white ones the the red and white ones they're like oh red that's on from top another and, set yeah it was from like two years ago i think oh wow they're okay. actually longer than all the rest of them they fit well with what they you have do. and then this there was one, a method to the madness this was a big merino wool that i spun with wizard so that i had all together. Thicker, more fun. Yes. What well, all together? Like, well, like, all the like colors together. All the colors and some white. for 4th of July, yeah. right? Because we don't have white in Wizard, so I wanted some more white. And then I put in some ribbon and. Just for fun. Just for fun. And I have my hair. That's cool. So that's what I've been doing for like ever and a day. Like, that's it? Is it? I mean, it is. Like, it's a lot. I, it's not just it. It's not just. I finished cutting hair on Saturday at the shop, went home, separated out what colors I didn't want in there, and then had a whole big pile of what colors I did. And then starting so Sunday, this is a I, lot of the colors that you did, you chose this, to exclude. This right here is what I chose to exclude because I wanted dark and broody. And so, like, light and broody. the corally <laughs> red light, that was... Light and yeah. not so broody. Yeah. So, um, anyway, 
I pulled out some, and I had a bunch left over because I made way more than I needed. But I didn't know how much okay. I was going to need. She just said way more than she needed. I vaguely heard that from over here, and it was it was very expressive, but I'm not sure if you heard that. Yeah. So, you get the point, though. You could probably yeah. follow without, you know. This chair is... Okay, sorry. It's squirrely. It's okay. It's wiggling. It's, so it's like a loose chair. That was my world for like the last, I don't know, three weeks because you were intensely I, like I didn't want to do anything else. <laughs> so, well, and did you? I mean, other than some shop stuff, did you need to do anything else? No, I mean, I have 198 needle needles. 198 needles on projects. Projects on needles and like <laughs> I don't want to do those either. So I don't know. I'm and I don't want to start a new one. Okay, I'm going to throw out there how many people can relate to this, though, because that's life. Like, yeah. like sometimes you just, you, for some of our knitters, that means they don't feel like knitting or crocheting. They just take a break if they're not the type of person like us who has a million projects on needles. But, like, Liz has a million projects on needles, and, and she still is just kind of like, ah, at times. Completely bored with us. everything. It happens, to, and sometimes we, we don't have the energy to get around to it, or there's other things going on yeah. in life. There's just, you know. Life. I get it. Huh? Life. Oh, I said I thought you said like, and I was like, finish the sentence? No, just life. Just life. Just life. I need to get past this sleeve separation spot, and then I'll start showing things off. So is there right. anything else you want to? No. Vamp list. No, I'm kidding. I, I, I got nothing. Um, I have I'm going to sit and organize lots of, these, though. I have lots of yarn barf that's starting to come out of this skein. Because um, the, the cake, I'm like trying not to have dead air right now, but I've got a knot to deal with. Um, the rainbow cake, I went. I, I knit from the inside out, and so that means it's it hit the point. Like, I have all but three stripes of rainbow color left, and so it's hit the point where it's starting to dissolve. I may not even pick up the ball to show y'all because um, because it might fall apart. We, um, we need to make sure that you have a nice sock on your cake when you start the next one. Yeah, but here's the thing. Like, Liz is talking about something to keep the tension, but here's the thing. It's cotton. So Cotton no, and linen no, yeah, work best in socks. But... But here's the mm -hmm. see like hello <laughs> it's a horror it might keep this but I think the yarn barf tangles are still gonna happen even with the tension on it the the yarn barf tangles may or may not happen but it's going to keep your cake from from, from doing this falling apart <laughs> yes it's like I feel like this this looks more like the um the the leg from um the leg lamp in. yes. <laughs> And then it does that, and it goes, oh, hello. Wah! Oh, this is probably scaring some people, so I'm going to stop doing it. You quit playing with your yarn. It's all right. It's like playing with your food. Quit playing with your yarn. <laughs> but it's so much fun. Okay, I just need to get past this little sleeve separation spot before I start um, trying things on for y'all, because that will give a little more structure. I really want to try this one on towards the end. Because I'm so excited I got to sleeve separation on this. I'm going to return to it in a minute. I'm just, I'm trying to, if you try to put it on barber cords, like right after, um, or any stitch holder, right after casting on the underarm stitches, like this is only three rows past, tops, oh, and I was supposed to, hang on, I was supposed to do a knit through the back loop there. Um, it, it stretches funny, and it doesn't necessarily give you a good indication. It kind of helps you know if sleeve separation went well, but it's not the whole story because once you have more material down here at the bottom, um, like by bottom I mean under the underarm separation, um, it, it can change the fit of your sweater. I would not give up all hope Unless the armholes are, are up way too high. I would not give up all hope if it, it feels a little funny after sleeve separation. Sometimes you have to go, and I know it feels like a waste of knitting, but sometimes you have to go an inch or two past sleeve separation to really start getting yeah. the vibe of, is this going to fit right? And I am only, <laughs> I, have, I have like two rows past sleeve separation. But I do backwards loop right now. I have fallen into the habit of doing just a backwards loop cast on because it's easy and you get to keep going. It, but it's not as structural 
as doing like a knitted or cable cast on under your arms. So if I tried it on right after adding on those stitches, first of all, it'd be hard to get them on and off of a stitch holder because they have, they're just loops, twisted loops. They don't have the structural integrity of stitches coming out of the fabric. And, um, and the tension's all wiggly woggly until you put a few more rows in. Wiggly woggly. We need a t-shirt. I know. So many things to just, you know, I can't claim credit even though it came out of my mouth. I just, you know, it's, it's, it's a variation on wibbly wobbly from, from Dr. Who. So, um, first things first, I blocked my ranunculus. I forgot to bring it home over the weekend, but I brought it home on Tuesday and and soaked it while I was making dinner and then spun it out in the washing machine when I set up for knit night and remembered right before I went to bed to pull it out of the washing machine, um, spin cycle only, to get the water out and laid it out to dry. And I flipped it over yesterday before I came to work so the back could dry a little bit more. It was all, <laughs> I'm going to go higgledy-piggledy on this one, when I laid it out. Um, coming out of the the washer and I I wasn't trying to make to pull it and aggressively block it so I just tried to straighten it out and when I flipped it over again I just tried to straighten it out to let it settle and Liz was saying like compare this I think it's last week that I had I had it on unblocked so um I'm like, are you Sorry. measuring me? What are you doing? No. <laughs> no. So um, I think the lace work did open up and settle a little bit. Yep. Um, it was it was kind of funky to try to lay it out, and um, and I think the bottom settled a little bit. the The sleeves wanted to stick like straight up, like in the in the place where I had folded it to let it dry blocked um, this morning, and I kind of had to take it off again and and. Give it a little softness. Soften up the linen. Soften up the linen. The linen, I think, will the, the sleeves feel a little funky, but I think they will soften and drape better as I wear it. I I am happy I blocked it though because I think I think it's settled and it drapes and it falls a little better. The armholes opened up a little bit, but that's kind of what the ranunculus. If you just bind off. Um, the sleeves for the short sleeves and don't put anything extra there like if you just bind off its sleeve separation and it is designed to be big and open the gap under your arm is going to be big and open part of what gives it more structure is if you if you actually put it on these stitches on a stitch holder and picked up stitches along the underarm this whole thing could tighten up quite a bit oh yeah and you've done other sweaters that mm -hmm. It so, tightened up a lot. And so that's the other thing is if anything, we might have mail this. Um, if anything, the, um, do we need my keys? They do. They're not here. Yes, Please. they are. They're on the shelf. Oh, they're way back. Sorry. She's not there. So I might try to edit this out. We'll see. She might not have come to us, but you might want to. Yes, she is. Um, we'll edit this out. So, uh, so when you see the sleeves being big and open like this, when um, when you're making a sweater that you'll be picking up stitches on, and you're like, this armhole is huge. Lots of that tightens up when you go to knit. So just hang on to that. Like if, if this upsets you, you might want to put an edge on it that will pull it up. But if you're making a sweater that later has you go up and pick up stitches, like lots of my other sweaters, don't give up hope if the arms, like when it's on stitch holders, if it's big and open there, because that can tighten up. Why? It says Napa. It's our... Oh, it's our return. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, I'm going to cut some of that out if I can find it. Anyway. Um... Is, oh, that's your bag. That's my bag. I was like, there's a random bag on the floor. I can't keep track of anything. All right, so um, so here's my ranunculus, all blocked and all ready. And I might post a picture on Instagram of before and after blocking because um, I like to do that. And we'll see, you know, some people might have liked it better before blocking. I kind of like how this, how the lace work top part sits. The, the neckline might be a little more stretched now. Uh -huh. But that's the that's the way that that the ranunculus is designed, 
and uh, again, we have addressed before people asking, well, how do I tighten that up? I'm not the best person to ask about how to modify an already written pattern that, that has, um, doesn't have this, the collar added on later. Like that is an adventure. If that is what you like, that I, you need to dabble with, but we've I, already addressed it. Yeah. Right? But I, I just start not do the collar and go pick up a collar, but then you have to decide. You how have to many know how to do that. And, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and you might need to experiment with that because yeah, anytime you, you start after the collar and then pick up stitches and add a collar on later, there's more structure right in here from picking up stitches and having a solid cast on that you're picking up off of. Um, but that doesn't always guarantee it's going to stay tight. Not necessarily. Yeah, it depends. It really depends. It's, it should be tighter, but how tight is a question that um, depends on the fiber, depends on so many things. Um, before I go to try on my two other things I want to try on for y'all today, um, I didn't put this away for a reason. Because, um, shout out to Deb. Deb was like, but the yarn you held up, it looks like it has a Z twist instead of an S twist. Or are you filming mirror? We film mirror, but we flip it. So that, um, so that it looks like not flipped, <laughs> you know, if we filmed flipped, it would, the sun dragon we show at the beginning would be backwards. What I think happened, this is still an S twist. What I think happened for Deb watching at home, since I held it sideways, if I hold it sideways, this can look like it's slanting like a Z, but you got to look at it in, in context of the rope itself, not like one strand held this way. How it's twisting within, like I'm looking at my side, but the other side is the same. How, it's, how it is within the, the long strand, not the strand held this way, but holding it up and down with things running this way. And yours was the same, I, right? This is opposite of that. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that one shows up clearly on camera, I, but that's okay. Um, so this, if you make the letter S, the, the center of the S, as the, as the twist goes long ways, is an S. And, and, and Liz's, it looks like if it, a Z. Mm -hmm. The slant in it. The slant goes, yeah, I'm like, eh. The slant goes. The, that the, was backwards, but I my was like, Z was backwards, but. I was like, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't do it. We see Sorry. ourselves mirror image it, when we film. It's it, a problem. It, mine is S ply Z twist. Store bought that most of what we have in here is a Z ply S twist. And what's really fascinating is the, <laughs> is the, um, the cotton, this cotton, um, the, the end of it is totally not twisted and plied because it's really hard to keep cotton um, plied like with no when nothing's holding it. So um, the end of my yarn ball here is just like, I could count how many plies it has because it's coming unplied, but only at the very end where it's cut. In, in my knitting, it is totally fine. So two more things for you all today, and, and it's almost time for the shop to open, but I have to show you two more things. So um, I'm getting my, ren my ranunculus off. Um, I got to the color work part. I haven't done it yet on my gold wing and I wanted to show you all how that is going and my cotton is getting stuck in my wool and everything's sticking. Huh? Um, so what I did because other people had said that their sleeves came out too long, the pattern for Jennifer Steingast's gold wing and I am knitting with ultra alpaca. Um, said to knit it's like after sleeve separation and you pick up stitches for your sleeve three inches and then do a certain number of decreases and for my size it was decrease every six rows a certain number of times till you get to the right stitch count so i started my decreases at two and a half inches instead i didn't want to start them too early because i got a lot of girth up in my upper arms right now and then I did my, my decreases on every fifth row instead of every sixth row. And I have just reached the end of the instructions for like knitting a couple rounds and doing your decreases so that the color work is the right stitch count. And she said to knit for 12 something inches or until you are 4.75 inches shorter than your sleeve length because the color work is gonna take 4.75 inches 
or you know I was estimating five inches. I like to make extra space. So here is where I'm at with this. And um, I don't have my knitting gauge thing here, but five inches takes me to just about, like not quite to my wrist. So five inches from where I am right now, in theory, should still be a little short for my arms, but blocking might release a little bit more. So I may, I may add a little more um, orange at the bottom before I do the eye cord. I will show you all what it looks like, but here's what it looks like. I was knitting two at a time sleeves. Here's what it looks like before the color work. I'm at the point to do the color work. I think my, my shifting ever so slightly worked out really well for me to not have sleeves that are super crazy long. And I planned that from the beginning, knowing that my arms, like most patterns, sleeves will come out long on me. So I tend to kind of shift for that. Um, so now I wanted to show this to you all before I started the color work. Now I'm going to do one sleeve at a time with color work because since I'm uh, following a chart, it should come out that they're the same length at this point. They're, they're the same length right now because I was doing two at a time sleeves. I have each sleeve on a different needle, but now I get to switch to a different size needle for the color work, but I'm very happy with how this came out. So that's this one. Now the last one, as I'm, I will show you really quickly. I'm not trying this one on. I feel like I'm knitting and knitting and knitting forever and this is not getting longer, but I know it's getting longer, but I still haven't finished one ball on my two for tank out of the compete. It's like when I was making those kits and I could wind for 20 minutes and not get 15 grams. <laughs> like I still Just have needed to go. 15 grams, but I was at 11 for like an hour and a half. I am so excited on my Trillium Lake with my Queensland rainbow cake. I I was um I made a bigger size than I originally thought when cuz it's just like the ranunculus in that you can um you don't have to pick a size until a certain point like they all start the same and I I when I got to that point I picked a bigger size than I originally thought so I was like I'll hit the sleeve separation after the yellow I hit the sleeve separation one row after the green. So I only have three more colors. I'm trying not to let this sag. I have an aqua, a teal, and a purple before this ball is, is kicked. So I'm going to need a second ball. My decision, what I have to decide right now, is am I going to start the rainbow over again with red? Or am I going to um, reverse out of it? Reverse out of it. Go from the purple to the teal. I kind of like normally I would reverse my rainbow again. I'm kind of intrigued to start with the red again. Just have it go rainbow, 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 like in the same order. It's not going to go through two rainbows. It it shouldn't. Um, the sleeve, now that I've separated on the first row of the coral, there's not much sleeve that happens after sleeve separation, so I can just end the sleeves in coral. And I think that'll be really pretty looking, like not having to worry about what, um, what color is there. And um, Sleeve separation was in coral? Sleeve separation is the first row of coral. That's perfect. First row. Yeah, and so when I, I, on the last row, like the increase row and then a set row, and my back measured roughly what it was supposed to, so I'm like, I'm just doing it. I'm just separating, and it really worked out well. I could have fudged it if it hadn't. But, um, okay, moment of truth. I'm going to put this on, and then we have to go, because I, uh, I heard the bells, which means the bells go off just a couple minutes before. Oh, that fits. Oh. Nice. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. The yarn barf. Lots of yarn barf. I'm so glad I picked this size. It's going to be a little roomy, but I'd rather have it be a little roomy than too tight. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. It's light as a feather because this is considered sport weight, but it's really kind of almost fingering weight. So this pattern was written for a size 4 needle, and I'm on a size 6 to get gauge because it's a thin it's a really thin sport weight if anything it's really a fingering weight but they're calling it a sport weight oh my gosh that's gorgeous it, i'm so 
This one I might not block. Yeah, I don't think it's you have already to. got nice drape. It's a hundred percent cotton. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, this is Trillium Lake by Kay Hopkins. Um, she's like knit for the soul is her one of her monikers. So um, yes, oh my gosh, and because it keeps striping, I get to see like you can see as the stitches we're getting a lot more stitches, the um, the stripes are getting thinner. And now that I've done sleeve separation, the stripes should be thicker again. So it's not like they're equal size, but it's so much fun. So I'm imagining, well, I might get almost really far and maybe I'll just end with a red at the bottom or something. Let me see where the ball runs out. And then we, I get to decide. But if y'all have any thoughts, everyone can weigh in. I might not choose your option. <laughs> but um, all right, we have to go because we have to open the shop. But oh, I wanna finish this now because it's, it feels so comfortable. It's like, I'm spilling stitch markers. It's, it's like half the weight of my ranunculus. My ranunculus is also considered a two, but it's really a three in terms of weight. It's really more of a DK, but this is like half the weight. Like it feels like I'm not really wearing like much of anything. It's like doing a fingering weight sweater. We have a sport weight cotton called the Botanica if you want yeah. a single color, but we have limited quantities of that right now and they're very neutral. Like they're not bright like this. But this, anything that doesn't have a lot of stuff going on in the sweater, this would be awesome. Like look at this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to wear this all the time when I finish it. All right. We, all right. we may or may not have someone. No, she's walking her dog. Okay. Yep. We got to go. So we are less than 70 people away from a sale. Wow. We're at like... Um, 19, 1930 something, and it's floating right there. It's kind of going up and down. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe because we'll get a sale. Yep. All right. Like subscribe, ring the bell. All the fun stuff. I want to knit on this again. I, there are other things I didn't show you like my llama. I'll have to wait till next week. Bye. Bye. What? I figured I'd bring it in so everybody can see. That'll be edited out. Will it? Probably. <laughs>